Hello, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand, and I'm bringing you another global monthly video hop. So this month, um, myself and other demonstrators from around the world are making projects, and our theme is techniques. So I uh, will list the links to all the other demonstrators in the description below this video. So after you watch mine, you can hop along to other people's and see what techniques that they're highlighting um, this month. I will also list um, the products and the product codes um, in the video as well. Uh, so if you wish to purchase anything, you can easily see which product codes you need. Contact your Stampin' Up! demonstrator to order, or if you're in New Zealand and don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, you're welcome to go to my site, michellecritchley.stampinup.net, to um, contact me and order directly to get shipped straight to you or you can um, contact me if you are in the area and want to um, pick up your products or come to any of my classes. I also have a blog and um, I put uh, pictures and ideas and descriptions of projects there as well. So this month for the technique is a new one for me. Um, I've just literally tried it um, in the last week so hopefully it goes well for this video. Um, and the technique I'm going to show is um, using bleach to stamp with. So I sort of got this idea from the um, Sunprints um, designer series paper that uh, Stampin' Up! has at the moment. So you can see here different um, shades of white and faded, and then there are um, some more images. So I was trying to recreate this kind of look, um, and I thought, oh, bleach might work well. So uh, what I did first is I tried it on different um, types of cardstock. So I just stamped um, with bleach and the stamps, oh, let's see, so the stamps I'm using here are the Nature's Print stamps. So there's some lovely images of different um, leaves, etc. in here. So I thought I'd go with that because that's very similar to what is in the sun prints with the ferns and things like that. So I chose that stamp set and I just took the images, um, used uh, bleach to um, stamp with, so no color, just straight bleach onto the stamped images. And um, I tried it on different cardstock to see what... Uh, how it affected it because I know with different cardstock you don't get a white bleached out look you get different colors so um, this one I believe is in the soft sea foam so it's not that let's see if I can there we go it's not that easy to see um, I tried it in the darker colors and as you can see that kind of came out um, kind of a reddy brown color um, here we go on red. Believe it or not, it almost looks kind of gray. And then with the petal pink, that kind of came out a bit white. Um, here's on one of the green, darker greens. So with this technique, experiment on the color um, of the cardstock because it'll come out differently. And I've seen um, some videos where people um, use paintbrushes and they um, heat emboss the images and then they use the paintbrushes to bring out color with bleach in the background. But I uh, haven't seen any where they just stamp straight with bleach, so we're going to try that here. And so that one came out of orangey color. So different cardstock will come out with different colors, so it doesn't give it a white bleach. It brings out basically strips away the color of the cardstock and you get um, the different layers below. So this is just showing you different ideas with different colored cardstock. So I obviously use scrap pieces here, just things that I had. That one is almost kind of a yellowy color. And then some don't really lend themselves very well to the technique. I don't know if I didn't have enough bleach or if um, See if that'll focus. Come on, focus. Um, or if it was just the color combination. So that's very light, kind of hard to see. 
This one almost gave me a blue on to the green background. Um, the orange came out more yellow. You can see some of the bleach splatter. And then this yellow it just came out a different shade of yellow. Sorry about the lighting. So I just want you to see all the different types. I even tried it on black and it came out just kind of a light, um, not that easy to see, kind of a yellowy light. This one more white. This is quite interesting. That's on, I think this might be a retired um, cardstock, but it came out gray. And on the bluey gray, we've got more of a very vanilla tried it on some green, a little bit of yellow. This one gave more the bleached look, but it's not very distinct, so it doesn't show up very well in your card. This, surprisingly, on the purple, came out very kind of uh, yellowy blue. And then this one is more of a blue And that I got, I got a bit of a brown and the orange. That would be good for like a autumn harvest one. Let's see, there, that's better. And then tried it on the new Starry Sky, but it didn't come out very dark or distinct. And then this one, I thought, oh, those colors look pretty good. So I decided to go with this, which is the. Um, new Tahitian Tide. I also experimented um, with stamping. So I stamped the solid color of the trees. This is the new um, tree stamp that's in the celebration, uh, free one in the celebration. So I stamped a solid color behind and then there's like a detailed stamp um, for the leaves. So I stamped the detailed one with the bleach to see how it would come out. So it just stripped away that straight bleach. It stripped away some of the coloring. So I did all that experimenting to decide what I would do. And in the end, I liked the look on the new um, Tahitian Tide cardstock. It almost gives a very vanilla color. So I chose to use the very vanilla background. So I'm gonna show you how to do this card. I'm gonna change it up slightly as I usually do when I do the card on the video, I do something slightly different um, by using embossing. So I'm going to use the tig, Twigs and Sprigs um, 3D embossing folder to give some depth to it. And we'll see how that comes out. I'm also going to heat emboss um, the words as well. So I use the um, Nature Prints dies. That's the set that matches with the Nature Print stamp set. So you could stamp some of these and then die cut the, the large images out, but I've just used these small um, sprigs and I've already die cut in granny apple green, some of the long ones, and then in um, soft sea foam, I've cut some of these little guys just to give some interest to the background. So I've already pre die cut those. And I'm just using a standard um, base in very vanilla. So here in New Zealand, that's an A5 piece scored in the center and then folded. So that's half of our normal size A4. And then I've cut um, a piece for the front, so that's just slightly smaller. So that's um, 10 centimeters by 14.3 centimeters that way. So that's what we're going to stamp on. And then I've just got a bit of scrap vanilla to do the words. So I'm going to do the words first. Um, this is, might be a new technique for some people as well. We've got our new embossing tray and our embossing buddy is back as well in the mini catalog. So the embossing buddy, um, you rub on your cardstock and that helps to get rid of any static electricity. Um, so when you do your embossing, the powder won't stick where you don't want it to be. So you just gently rub it on there 
And so the embossing buddy, the tray, um, tweezers, and a brush are all new. Um, it's the embossing essentials set um, that's new in the mini. Um, I've got my tray from many, many years ago. <laughs> So I'm still using my tray. So first, ink up your image with some Versamark. And then if you want to color, that's not one of the um, powder colors we have, then you ink it in the color you want. And then I'm going to pour clear powder on top. And so that'll give me the nice raised image in the color I choose. So I've got some Versamark on there, and then I'm just going to ink it up on my, what's that, Tahitian Tide, and then just going to stamp it, and then I'm going to sprinkle some clear embossing powder on top of it. So that's the clear embossing powder on top of it. And that will allow the color to come through. Okay, so I'm going to go heat that up. And then I'm going to die cut it with the image that comes from the sun print um, dies. So that will give us the image there. So I'll do that off camera because it'll be quite noisy. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I have heat embossed that, and I did it with clear, and die cut it. You might not be able to see very well on the video, but it's shiny, so it's given it a bit of shine there. So I'll pop that aside. That's our sentiment. And now I'm going to do the bleaching. So with the bleaching, one, don't wear any clothes that you're worried about getting ruined in case it splatters. Um, and so use the cardstock that you've decided to stamp with. Put your images on your blocks already. Um, so I'm going to do the three leafy images. And then you want some bleach. So I've just got um, the lid to a um, container. So have something big enough for your biggest block to fit into. And I'm just going to put paper towels. So just a bit of paper towel there to put the bleach on. And so here in New Zealand, um, I looked around for bleach and I could only find it in really large bottles for like laundry. Um, so I have put some bleach in a small container. If you're gonna do that, make sure you label it bleach. I've even put the little X on there. Um, so people know that what's in there. Um, I live alone, so I'm the only one that's going to know, um, access this, but it's always good to have it labeled. So in case you forget or somebody else is over, um, they don't go using it and I'm going to store it in my craft room. Um, so it's not going to be put anywhere else, um, that anybody should have access to. So what you want to do is I just use straight bleach. I don't know if people have other ideas of watering it down or, or what, but I just did it with straight bleach. So um, pour some of the bleach onto your paper towel. I'm just going to spread it around a bit. If you um, are have allergies or whatnot, I suggest that you might want to um, wear gloves. Um, if it's going to affect your skin or anything like that. So put a bit on there. If you find you put too much on there, just put another layer of paper towel to soak it up. So I'm going to use this as my ink pad. Um, <clears throat> so instead of using normal ink pad, I'm going to just use that. So what you're going to do, I'm going to start with my biggest image. And hopefully you can see this. The lighting's a bit tricky today. So you just want to get some of that bleach on there. You can see it bubbling up. You don't want too much. So if you find that it's getting really bubbly and too much, put another layer of um, paper towel down to soften it up. And I'm just going to turn it around a bit to pick up the bleach. Now, it might not look like much in the video, but I can see that there is a layer of bleach on there. And 
I just want it to be kind of an even layer. And then just pick somewhere to start. And so just straight down, not a lot of pressure and not a lot of bleach because it'll just turn into one big blob. It depends on what you're stamping. But these images have a lot of detail in them. Now you're not going to see much at first, but given time, it will the bleach will bring out the color. So just eyeballing where you have already stamped and then just maybe do another one somewhere else. So just decent pressure and straight up. So you could might have been able to hear it pull off um, the cardstock. So I'm just going to... I always turn mine over just to see if in the light if there's a bit of bleach on there. Feeling like I might not have enough on, but you don't know until you um, see your image. And don't worry about overlapping things, that's kind of the look I'm going for. And unlike Versamark, where you can usually see straight away where you've put things, the bleaching method takes a little while for it to show up. So I've got some images. I'll bring it up to the camera in a second so you'll be able to see. I'm just going to turn my paper over, see if I can pick up some more ink that way. Um, trying to think of where I've already stamped. So you can either wait between each stamped image to see where it shows up. So then you can add exactly where you want, or you can do the trial and error and just stamp willy-nilly and see how things come up. So I'll leave that for a second to see how it's, you can, should be able to see in the lighting there, how a little bit of it's starting to show up. Now I don't know if using the heat gun would um, make it show up quicker or if it's better just to wait it out my original one so that's my original one I used uh, quite a bit of um, bleach on that one I had to add an extra paper towel because I haven't glued it down yet that's what happens when you use too much bleach and you give a lot of pressure so that was my first attempt um, at this and as you can see you got no detail because I had way too much bleach and then when I added another paper towel and used less bleach I got a better detail like with the fern and everything. So um, that's why I hadn't glued that one down yet, just so you could see the differences. Nice thing is there's always two sides to every piece of card, so you can always turn it over. So see, this is not coming out as dark as I want. So I'm going to give it another go, add some more bleach to my paper towel, and try it on the other side, and then I'll choose whichever side I think looks best. Now I think I might have too much bleach on that paper towel. So it's just a matter of trial and error because see now if I, you can see there's way too much there. So if I just put a little bit of paper towel over that, that's a bit better I think. So I hope you're still with me. <laughs> Better I trial and error it, and then you can learn from my mistakes. Okay. So this is the biggest image. It's just there we go. That's. I think I might have enough on there now. And I'll just do something completely different so we can tell the different front to the back. And then we can see which side we like better and go with that. Okay, that might be the better idea. Just push it down once instead of pressing it lots of different times.
that one I can see a bit more of the wetness. I'm not sure if you can tell, but I can see it's a bit wetter on that. And then so it's sort of a trial and error of trying to figure out which um, which way works best for how much bleach to use. But that's what new techniques are about, learning what works and what doesn't work. And let's try the fern. coming out from the side. Now this one you might be able to see on the camera. I can see the color coming through nicely already. I want a bit of that bottom of the fern to come out. Let's see if I can get some of that here. Oh, see that one I can definitely see the colors are coming through. So let's go on the back. So that that was my original side. I obviously didn't have enough bleach on some of those images. But here the images are starting to come through. And you can see definitely the ferns coming through in that one. I might not have had enough bleach at the top there. But that's where you can just add other images um, to fill in the gap. So this one here, I'm just going to stick that straight down the center. And this technique, it doesn't really matter if you've got things overlapping or how they're coming through because um, every one will be different. That's the nice thing with the technique. You can have different pictures and images depending on how it reacts with the paper and how you stamp your images. That's also why it's always good to have some sort of sentiment in the front that can cover up any mistakes that you make. Okay, so I added a few more images and as you can see they're really starting to come out. I did a little trial and error off camera with the heat gun to see if that helped things um, help things along a bit, which I did a little bit. So that's my base card. I'm going to leave it at that. As you can see, the other side I just um, must not have had enough bleach and didn't press hard enough. So if you have a nice combination of bleach and you press, see here, I either didn't have enough ink at the top of that stamp or I um, didn't press hard enough there. So now I'm going to give this a go with the twigs and sprigs embossing folder and see how that um, looks. This is one of those specialty embossing folders which actually has a die that you can cut out all the um, sprig images at the same time as you emboss, but I'm just going to um, emboss this just to give it some more depth um, compared to my original card and then we'll see how that looks okay so there we go so we've now got some depth with the white bleached out in the background I think that looks really cool so now that I've done that I'm just gonna put my card together get the bleach out of the way so I don't accidentally touch something with that now the other thing you might be wondering is about cleaning your um, stamps. I simply just use the chamois um, and clean them off as per usual. Um, I think the bleach dries on them and so far I haven't noticed it affecting any stamping. I'm going to stamp an image on the inside so you'll be able to see that it doesn't appear to be affecting the stamp. So inside of the card I'm going to go ahead and stamp the large image in Tahitian Tide to 
much just to give some interest to the inside of the card. Oh, I'm moving things around. Um, so I cleaned that off. So this stamp pad is actually very juicy. See how juicy that is? Um, so I'm just going to... I think I might just put a little on either side of it. Just to give some interest. So that's the inside of the card. It's very juicy. That's because it's a new stamp pad. If you find your stamp pads are too juicy, um, I suggest you could just use like a paper towel to pick up some of the extra ink off the top, but that's a bit of a waste. So I like to get the um, ink spots. Um, they come em empty. You can buy them. I think they're in a pack of five or six. And just use the ink spots to pick up any extra ink off your juicy pads if they're brand new and they're very juicy. And that way you have a mini... Um, ink spot that you can use for other projects, take away with you. Um, that's also very good to use them when you're using the Stamparatus. So that's one way. I have a video all about that as well. I think I did a couple of years ago. Okay, so we've got that. We've got this. I'm going to put some ribbon. This is a new beautiful um, soft sea foam. Uh, what is this called? seam binding ribbon. I chose that because the colors go quite well with the very vanilla and so I'm going to decide what, where I want my words. So I think I'm going to cover up that part that doesn't have quite as much going on. So <clears throat> just a bit of tape on the back where you want your ribbon to go because the best thing for holding ribbon down is tape. Um, trying to use glue doesn't work very well especially if it's very thin ribbon because it will seep through and um, it might discolor the ribbon as well. So I always just put a little tape on the back where I want my ribbon to be held. And I'm going to just peel it up. I'm having a bit of trouble because of the embossing. It's going into the grooves of the embossing. So there we go. So I usually start at one side, just fold it over, then come around the front and decide where I want it to line up. And there's my snips. Snip off what you don't need. That way you don't waste a lot of ribbon. I tie bows off the, um, the um, roll as well, and then I cut them so I don't waste ribbon. Okay. So now I can stick this down. I do like it with the extra um, embossed piece. I'd be curious to know what you think. You can put it in the comments and let me know which of the two cards you like. I'll show them both at the end. So you can um, tell me whether you like it with the extra embossing or just the plain look. So this is one of those cards that it just come out different every time because it all has to do with how much bleach you use, where you stamp your images. It's always going to look different, which is lovely because handmade cards are one of a kind. And it's much better than buying mass produced multiple cards. And you could do this with any image. I find I like it better with the um, detailed images, but remember, don't have too much bleach and or don't push too hard because, see, the stamp has all that lovely detail in the leaves. So I'm just going to... The rest of the card is relatively simple. Now, if you've watched my videos before, you know what I did. I made tabs, so I only glue down the corner. Because if it's crooked, I can easily pull up the corner to readjust it. Um, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, that's what I did. I create tabs with my tear and tape so that I can easily pull it up if it's crooked. 
and I'm pretty good at stamping things crookedly. Okay, so I want to add these little bits behind just to give it some interest. Um, and I could just glue them straight down at the bottom. Um, but I might stick them in the back to start with. So the easy way to do that, again, is with tape. So put some tape where you want your images, your bits to stick. So I just put some tape just on those two parts there. I feel like the lighting in here is not very good. I apologize if it isn't. Um, I have too much sunlight. I adjusted my blinds because there was too much sunlight coming in. Okay, so I want this one to come down about there. And just use the tape to hold it in place. And that one looks pretty good right there. So the tape just grabs it and holds it where I want it to be. And then in there just stick it down onto the tape and then a couple little sprigs coming out the top so this could be a congratulation card this could be a birthday card any type of card really with the sentiment on it to go behind. Sometimes the hardest part is actually figuring out how to decorate the front after you got the background done. Okay, so there we go. And I'm just going to pop that up with a few dimensionals. I'm going to grab some mini dimensionals just to pop up the top and bottom part. If you don't use tape to hold your sprigs in place, um, it's a good idea to put your dimensionals right over um, those little bits that helps to hold them in place. So I might put one right there. And one right on top of these sprigs here. There we go. I don't usually use that many dimensionals, but as I've got these little sprigs I want to hold in place. Let me just peel the edges off. Like that. And just find a spot. So the nice thing with this is you can just find your spot to place your sentiment to cover up anything that doesn't look quite the way you want. Then I finished off with some of our new in color dots, just to add some more interest to it. I find these green because they're in different um, gradients of the new in colors. The green goes quite well with um, the colors I've chosen for for the leaves, and so, so it's got one of each of the five in colors. Um, I'm going to go with this little big dot and then a couple small ones the other side. Come on down. And those colors go nicely with that. And then I'm just going to put some of the dark ones, the other little ones around just to fill in some of the spaces I've got. Maybe put one in just dot them around randomly. 
don't like that random spot. I'm going to go with that random spot. <laughs> so you could keep adding more and more bling. It's up to you how you want it to look. So um, there you go. So that is the new one that I've just made with the embossing folder. So that's doing the um, bleach stamping technique. And then this was my other one, which I need to stick the top down. Better do that now while I'm thinking of it. Otherwise I'll forget and I might try to send it to somebody and the top will come off. But I didn't want to stick it down because I wanted you to learn from my mistake and see how bad that background is. You might like that look, who knows? Um, another idea is to just stamp with the bleach and then use the outline dies. So these outline dies will cut out the leaves and then you could do some decoration that way. So if you do that, I'd love to see the card you make. So please um, add it in the comments or go to my page and send me a message with your cards that you make. Um, that was another idea I had, but sometimes I have to stop with the ideas and get on to making the video because there is a time where this has to be done. Okay, so there you go. So those are the two different ones. That was my original one. It's just a plain background. And this one, I've got the raised background and can't quite tell, but that is um, embossed with the clear embossing. So I'd love to know which one you prefer. Um, that was done with our Twigs and Sprigs embossing folder, the Nature's Print bundle, which is the stamp set and the dies. So that was my attempt at copying the sun print paper. So let me know what you think and which one you prefer. I do like the one with the raised um, background. Please um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, I will list links to all the other ones that are participating in this month's global monthly video hop, which is all about techniques. So I don't know what techniques they'll be showing, but I'm sure there'll be some fabulous ones um, to give you ideas. Um, and I will also list the products that I used here. So if you wish to purchase them, you'll be able to um, get the product codes. There is a new um, mini catalog, July to December. There it is there. And um, I mentioned the embossing editions toolkit um, has come back. So you can get the embossing buddy. There you go on page 49. So that kit comes with the tray, which I use, the embossing buddy, and you also get a brush and a, um, a tweezers, a set of tweezers to make it very easy. Here's a close-up image of that. Some, it's a fabulous set to get um, if you don't already have one. Um, I have mine from a long time ago from doing Stampin' Up! So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, and I'd love to hear your feedback. Have a lovely day. Bye-bye.